Now that we've configured our first radio as an access point, we're going to configure our second radio as a client. To do this, we will need to log into the web manager of the second radio, uh, open our configuration page, which I've already set the IP address to static and it's 0 0.253. Go to the WLAN interface tab where we will set our operating mode. For client modes, there are four different client modes available. The first client mode is client FTB or fully transparent bridge. This mode is used when you're connecting to another Phoenix contact access point only. If you're using a third party access point, this mode will not work properly. The next mode is client MCB or multi-client bridge mode. This mode is used when our radio is going to be connecting to a third party access point and you will have multiple wired devices wired to our radio. So imagine having our radio ethernet port connected to a switch and on that switch you have multiple ethernet devices. You will want to use client multi-client bridge mode. Client SCB mode is single client bridge. Again, this is used when you're connecting to a third party access point, but it is limited to one single wired device connected to the ethernet port. So where multi-client bridge mode, you can have a switch with multiple ethernet devices. Client SCB is only one wired ethernet device. And this mode should be fully compatible with any third party access point. Multi-client bridge mode will have some compatibility issues with some third party access points, depending on how their routing is done. And the last mode is client NAT, where the radio will do either one-to-one -one NATing or uh, IP masquerading and port forwarding uh, on the wireless connection. So because I've, I have a Phoenix contact access point set up, I'm going to use client FTB. I'm going to configure it to Justin's access point because that's the network name that I used on my access point. I'm going to leave it as WPA2 PSK AES and I'm going to use the same password that I used in my access point. From there, I'm going to apply and save. And because I'm on a bench um, with two radios side by side, the wireless connection should establish here pretty quickly. Um, two ways to determine if the connection is established. Uh, one, on the front of the radio, the WLAN LED will go from purple to blue. And also in the web manager, you'll see the signal strength bars at the top turn gray. And if you hover over them, you'll see a signal strength bar there as well. Um, if you go into the information tab here, you can also see in the connections tab that I am connected to an access point. The network name is just an access point. The MAC address of that access point is listed. The data rate that I'm getting, 104 megabits per second, and the signal strength. Also in the client module, if you go to diagnostics and go to the RSSI graph, you can see a running log of the signal strength. So if the device was moving, uh, maybe on a guided vehicle and you wanted to see how the signal strength was in different areas of your facility, you could watch this screen and as you move around, this signal strength bar would start scrolling up and down. Um, you can also track that via syslog server if needed. Um, but this is a nice, nice diagnostic tool if you need to see what the signal strength is in different areas. So another way to, is again to confirm con um, connection. My laptop is wired to my client device. Uh, I can wirelessly connect to my access point. So my access point is 192.168.0.254. And if I come in the connections tab there, I can see my access point has one client connected. It is a client. It is connected on just an access point. The MAC address of my client is listed, the data rate and the signal strength. <laughs>